Hello everyone, my name is Paolo Ferrari. I am the CEO and President of Bridgestone Americas. It's great to be back at CES, of course, in a very different setting than last year, but yet still, still very exciting uh, because, of course, technology continues to advance and we have a chance, of course, to debate around these topics in the next uh, several days online as opposed to be uh, in person. Today I want to show you a little bit uh, how Bridgestone sees mobility evolving, uh, what are we doing from a product roadmap, from a technology uh, roadmap, and um, share a little bit uh, some of the content that we're preparing uh, for our customers, for our partners for, for the next several months. And we like to say that the world is really at a turning point. You could argue that the world uh, has been on a turning point for a while, and COVID just uh, in a way accelerated some of the reflection around the things that you see here. Uh, certainly changes in technology, uh, changes in consumer behaviors, social inequality, um, climate change. And um, uh, of course, some of these topics are very, very scary. And, and you could take a negative spin in a way and be concerned about the future. But we actually believe uh, that there's a, a wonderful opportunity out there to re recalibrate really around these themes and, um, and take them as an opportunity to really drive, drive change. Uh, in certain industry, you already have signs of new socioeconomic systems, a uh, system in which uh, we are fully connected in networks and we are fully connected in grids as opposed to working in silos, where uh, consumers and partners, they want to experience and sharing things uh, and products and services as opposed to owning them, where we have a chance to upload and download things as opposed to just downloading only from someone. And in a situation where there are much more distributed assets as opposed to monopolies or oligopolies. And I think um, the energy industry is a good example of that. The media industry is a good example of that. As you know, we're all pretty much or could be producers of energy. And then if we're net consumers uh, of energy, we obviously pay for more. If we're net producers of energy, we upload to the grid and share and potentially get paid. Same things for media, of course. We used to only download content. Now everybody's a content producer and we can upload our contents, of course, on the web and even make money out of it. So I think those uh, socioeconomic system, those industries are showing that there's a way forward which is much healthier, again, much more in networks, much more where we can share things, and much more where we have a much better distribution of assets. I think that mobility is no exception. This is how we see really a new mobility ecosystem, which by the way happens to be really good for society and are really good for business. So if I can start from the top of the slide, you see that basically we represent an ecosystem of fleets, an ecosystem of platforms. Of course, in our case, we talk about fleets of mining trucks, fleet of planes, fleet of big trucks, fleet of small trucks, fleet of robo taxis. But all they have in common, of course, is that they are fleets. And these fleets require different kinds of services. In our case, they require tires, yes, always. But they also require solutions that help them to reach their objectives. And their objectives, as you can see here, are around safety, for sure, are around the environment, with, of course, you know, lower uh, CO2 emissions and better fuel economy, are about economics. They have to make money, and they make money through, of course, productivity and efficiency. So this world is a world of platforms. You can talk about connected vehicle platforms. You can talk about fleet management solutions platform. You can talk about smart city. Of course, you can talk about tire platforms as well, and we're going to come back to this point. But it's a world also that collects a massive amount of data. And we see that data flowing back also into our system, into our Bridgestone digital twins, in our ability to process that data and turn them into algorithms to provide insights for our customers, to provide insights for our engineering chain, and really flow this data back into the system to really create new value for the mobility ecosystem. We like to be integrated. We are integrated into this mobility ecosystem. Uh, again, it's a world of platforms and platforms that really, really create value for society and create value for the customers. In this context, again, this new ecosystem, mobility as a solution is a different world. It's a world where we have different kinds of partners and also different kinds of competition in a way. We go from ourselves, of course, to our competitors and our partners, the OEMs, the fleet management, the technology companies. So it's a very different uh, system that we're used to. It's a system where uh, the importance of fleet is enormous and is growing uh, faster and faster. 
And then, of course, we have the case uh, trains. Of course, connected, autonomous, shared, and electric, as you can see here. So connectivity is, of course, vehicle to vehicle, vehicle to parts, vehicle to smart cities. Autonomous driving, electrification, shared. All of these trends, again, were there. And we see, of course, COVID potentially accelerating some of these trends. Certainly, all vehicles will be connected, and almost all of them already have some sort of connectivity. I think the autonomous driving technology will continue to evolve. A lot of debate around sharing, right? What's happening to sharing? Uh, I remember in the first few months after the COVID crisis, people begin to say that ride sharing was dead because people didn't want to share any more rides. But what if people want to share more rides with fewer people rather than you know, a lot of people in mass transit transportation? So I think ride sharing will still be there if anything will accelerate. And if anything, we should always be open to new technology that will adapt to the new situation that we're facing. In this case, of course, a situation of a global pandemic. So a lot of implication around mobility as a service, a lot of implication around the connected, autonomous, shared and electric path. And of course, Bridgeton is adapting fast to these new conditions. Of course, to address such massive changes that we see in our environment. And again, I think one incredible thing that is happening today is that all of these changes are happening at the same time. We've seen technology changes in the past. We've seen behavioral changes in the past. We've seen regulation changes in the past. I don't think we've ever seen all of these things happening individually at a massive scale and all of them together. And this is why it's exciting to see all of this happening within the mobility ecosystem. And for us to be continuing to lead this new mobility ecosystem, we needed to kind of um, rebase our strategy, rebase our foundation, and really talk about a new North Star. A new North Star, which is really around four elements, our foundations, our vision, our business, and our team. And of course, with these four elements coming together, we have the ambitions to move the world ahead to a better place. So let me cover each of them very quickly. Let me start with our foundation. When I joined the company four and a half years ago, a bit more, I was very much inspired by our DNA as a company, our culture as a company, which really starts from our founder's model, uh, which was inspiring because it, this was said decades and decades ago, not just in the last few weeks, because suddenly to talk about sustainability is good. So many, many decades ago, Shoiro Ishibashi said that he was convinced that a simple profit-seeking business will never thrive, but a business that contributes to a society and country will be forever profitable. Very, very powerful statement. We sometimes summarize it as what's good for society is good for business. And that's really true, specifically in this time of very big changes in the world. And on to our vision. Our vision, let me just state it, our vision is to provide social and customer value as a sustainable solutions company. Very powerful. As you can see, we put societal, uh, societal contribution first, and if we do that and we serve our customer uh, well, we will also eventually be a very profitable company. And this statement and this vision is so important for us that we consider it a third foundation. The first foundation for the Bridgestone Group was in 1931, the foundation of the company, of course, with its mission of serving society with superior quality. The second foundation was in 1988, of course, the big merger between Bridgestone and Firestone, where we became a truly global company. Now the new foundation is today, 2020, to provide social and customer value as a sustainable solutions company. Very important. This is our third foundation. And what is really our vision to provide uh, social and customer value? First of all, as you can see here, I'm referring again to uh, mass, mobility as a service, very important, which is, was, was represented in the earlier slide about that ecosystem of platforms and ecosystem of connected vehicle and connected fleets and connected buildings and connected smart city. And our way of contributing to this is first of all to co-create and co-innovate with partners. This concept is very important for us. The more we look at this ecosystem, the more, the more each company needs to understand that we cannot do it alone. We need to partner and put really our assets together for the greater good. And for us, it's about these two cycles, the product evolution cycle and the service evolution cycles coming together, together with our global service network, we have more than 10,000 points of sales across the world, 2,500 only in the U.S., really being able to take our products, take our solutions, put it together, uh, take our services, put it together for solutions for mobility as a service. And it's really hardware and software coming together, service network coming together for creating value for society and for customers in the ecosystem we just described. 
To do that, we also changed our brand's tagline. So today, Bridgestone is solutions for your journey. And this is really coming together nicely also in the next uh, couple of slides that I'm going to share with you. We then have to manage a business. So within this very, very compelling vision, we are a very pragmatic company. So we have a very simple business approach. It's about ABC. A is tire and rubber, which is really to produce and sell products, not just any products, high value added products, what we call mix. So technology applied to a tire for superior performance. This is the base of our strategy. So we will continue to invest in our core business for the next foreseeable future, because this is very much at the base of this helix that you see here represented. So that is our core business. But we understand that there's opportunities out there with B, tire-centric solutions. And this is truly about create and sell value. This is really about the tire and its hardware component coming together with its software component, its sensor technology, and really turn this data of the tires and the connectivity between the tire and the car into insights for the drivers, for a fleet, for an OEM and also turning these services more into subscriptions-based services. We mentioned before that people want to experience things, that people want to be able not necessarily to own things, but to have a service they generally want it now and they want it immediately. And then if we talk about mobility solutions, it's more about connecting to the rest of the platforms. Again, we're talking about creating value as a system. We like that word very much through connected platforms. So our tire platforms, which is again hardware, software, will connect into fleet management solution platform, as we will see in a little bit, will connect into connected vehicle platforms, will connect into smart city platforms, and together we're really able to advance mobility and a much more sustainable mobility. And it's really about A plus B plus C, as you can kind of see that arrow spiraling back down, because of course we keep, keep on feeding the data around this helix to continue to enhance our products and enhance our solutions. So let me give you a few examples of um, what we mean by A, B, and C. First of all, let us go back to the basics. The vast majority of people still underestimates the value of a tire in a vehicle's performance. Let's remember that the tire is the only part that touches the road. Think how important that is. So it is about still serving our basic needs which is the driving, the turning, the braking, but more and more the transmitting and the connecting. The connectivity between the tire and the vehicle dynamics and the vehicle electronics makes the performance of the vehicle much better in terms of safety, in terms of efficiency, in terms of performance as a whole. And if we uh, think about all the businesses that we operate in, again, this is true for big trucks, for small trucks, for performance cars or any car, for agricultural tractor as well as big uh, mining uh, uh, vehicles, as well, of course, as aircraft, where our goal is to provide the best tire technology for the optimized performance of that specific vehicle. And if we look at even more the future, this is an interesting image that shows that over decades, of course, we went from a wooden tire to a radial tire. That was a big technological step that happened uh, back in the days. And now we're really talking about the non-pneumatic tire. Now, this is an air-free technology. It's a great example of how we continue to invest in our core tire business for the long run. We're working through this kind of concept that you see in this picture to really improve safety, eliminate downtime associated, of course, with tires that uh, could also have, of course, a puncture. And um, um, it's really a, a concept for both personal mobility, but also for commercial trucking applications. As a matter of fact, the first application will be in, in, uh, in, uh, in trucking, in trucking uh, transportation. This is really an untapped potential. Uh, it's about reducing tire-related uh, road size emergencies. It's about improved fleet efficiency, and ultimately really to promote also a more sustainable environment because fewer tires will be discarded as waste because of course we're talking about retrading uh, a different frame uh, of a tire. So um, we have tested trucking concept in a variety of wet and dry conditions. Uh, the results are promising. And again, we're also discussing uh, with regulatory authorities uh, uh, to eventually make these tires a, a real thing for the roads. So again, first uh, application will be around trailer. Very, very exciting. Of course, this is a revolution and we're very happy to lead in that revolution on our core uh, tire business. If we look at uh, B, tire-centric solutions, 
Well, Tire Center Solutions, as I said before, it's a combination of hardware, the tire, and a software, a sensor technology. And what really is IntelliTire for us, it's a subscription-based mobility solutions designed to reduce related costs and inefficiencies for fleet. So what it does, it really brings together a number of smart sensing uh, tire technologies and advanced data analytics to fleet operators, including, uh, for instance, automated pressure and temperature alerts, um, digital tire inspection tools, and asset tracking uh, via QR codes and RFID. Uh, sensors can be mounted um, internally or also as an external uh, kit and an external valve. And the data is sent in real time to the Bridgestone Cloud for immediate alerting and analytics to the customer, to the driver, or, get, or, get, or, or to the fleet manager. So obviously the overall goal here is increase efficiency, reducing downtime, which is super valuable for the fleet, decreasing total cost of ownership, and more importantly, increasing the fleet safety. So, I think a video is uh, describing a lot better what I just said, so uh, let me share with you this video on IntelliTire. So I hope the video on IntelliTire uh, showed you how really these things are, are, are really happening. They're not just on a slide, uh, but they, uh, they're really coming together uh, about the tire, the sensor, and again, the insights that come from this data uh, for the benefit of the fleets. Another great example that uh, we're very proud of in terms of our solutions roadmap is the partnership that we signed with Microsoft and specifically on the Microsoft Connected Vehicle Platform. And this is really uh, an effort and a project that Microsoft and Bridgestone put together by uh, leveraging on the platform uh, and capturing the data available on the platform together with the tire data and uh, coming up with a, with a Bridgestone uh, proprietary algorithm, which is called the Bridgestone Tire Damage Model, which is plugged into the platform and, of course, offered to drivers, uh, to OEMs, as well as to uh, fleet managers. This is another great example of the insights that come through data and come through collaboration and co-creation with partners. And again, this specific tire damage model is very good for drivers, very good for customers, and very good for society, because it is also, also very much about, about safety. So let me uh, show the video that describes this partnership.
Now, with the IntelliTire example and the Microsoft Connected Vehicle Platform example, I described to you our tire-centric solution, so the B over our ABC Helix. Let me move now into uh, C. Uh, and really, uh, C, as a, as a reminder, is about uh, creating value as a system. Uh, so putting more and more platforms together uh, in the uh, newly formed uh, mobility ecosystem. One great example that we have as a group is really the integration of our tire module and IntelliTire-like uh, modules into Webfleet Solutions. Webfleet Solutions is a, a, a company that uh, Bridgestone purchased about a year and a half ago. Uh, it used to be called TomTom Tom Telematics, now we rebranded it, uh, Webfleet Solutions, and is the leading um, fleet management solutions company in Europe, uh, with uh, almost a million uh, connected vehicles uh, in the continent. The acquisition was, of course, a big step uh, for us as a group to move uh, more aggressively into digital uh, mobility solutions, and we've been working diligently to take out the synergies or exploit the synergies from this acquisition, specifically, again, in the connectivity space and as well as into the integrated platform space. So I'm going to describe to you how through this acquisition, we're really seeing all of these platforms coming alive together. So I'm gonna run the video and kind of describe to you what you're going to see, which is basically a day in the life of a fleet manager as well as of a driver. And the ability to really integrate everything into Webfleet Solutions, which is of course the fleet management solution platform. And you see here, of course, in the morning, the dispatcher or the fleet manager basically managing the routes and the various dispatch of the fleet, of course showing the most optimized route to get to destination. The driver will do, of course, his or her part by putting together Fleet Pulse, which is one other application, Webfleet Solutions, and the Pro 8, which is the device, of course, that is in the truck that is capturing all the data. As you can see, you did a walk around where automatically you can detect if the tires are in good health or if they need some sort of a control or checkup, maybe they're underinflated or overinflated, or maybe they need some replacement. Of course, you load everything up into the cloud and the vehicle status are 100% good, so the vehicle is good to go. On the route, of course, anything could happen, including the traffic control that could happen. This is downtime, as you can imagine, for a truck, so it's not a good sign. So as long as you have everything in hand and everything is good and everything is green, I think the traffic control can be passed in a much faster way and you're back on the road. Again, it's all about minimizing downtime. Of course, the platform monitors all the mandatory brakes that are needed, and this is very good for safety. Then, of course, this hardly ever happens, but it could happen, a tire puncture, which is, of course, a potential safety issue, and also it will lead to downtime, unless you have a Tirematics alert and you have an integrated RFID, Tirematics, and Webfleet Solutions built-in tire pressure alert, which enables the driver to be notified that there's something wrong with the tire, but more importantly, our analytics can show that the deflation trend of the tire will allow to drive safely still for more than four hours. Now, four hours of additional uptime is huge for a fleet. In a safe way, we can still conclude some of the dispatch and deliveries that we have to do, and but also, we have to instantly already uh, place a tire service order so that by the time I'm able as a driver to get service, the tire is already there, and I can also minimize the downtime in terms of service. Then eventually, once the service is scheduled, of course, there will be a delivery made on schedule for the driver and for the truck to be serviced. The tire repair will take place, and of course, the driver is back on the road. And as you can see here, this is an example of data coming from the tire, data coming from the truck, platforms coming together, tiremetics, Webfleet Solutions, as well as the retail platform and a, and a service platform, with the objective, of course, to continue to uh, promote safety, as well as maximizing uptime, minimizing downtime, and overall maximizing total cost of ownership for the fleet. So I hope this video really shows you uh, our vision in motion with platforms coming together as a system to truly create value uh, for customers, for the fleet in this case, through, of course, the uh, reduction of total cost of ownership and increased safety and overall improved sustainability. So very exciting for us uh, to see this coming together. But so before I close, I want to talk to you about uh, another example where truly our A, B, and C, A plus B plus C, are coming together to deliver value uh, for society and for customers. So I want to talk to you about Bandag. Bandag is our retread business, uh, and it's a great example of sustainable mobility solutions uh, platform in action. 
Uh, and it really demonstrates that what's good for society is good for business. Tires are one of the most overlooked and underestimated aspects of efficiency. And when properly maintained, premium commercial truck tires can be retreaded multiple times to lower the total cost of ownership. The casing will be in service much longer. And this, of course, reduces natural resource consumption, which is, of course, very good for the environment. As we look to the future, we know that the car park will be predominantly um, fleet-owned, connected, autonomous, shared, and electric. And as the fleet increase uh, in size is influenced, the demand for safe, reliable, and sustainable tire solutions will become increasingly important, and Retreads and Bandag uniquely meet these needs. So um, we're going to put a lot of investment behind Bandag. It's a wonderful, wonderful uh, tire-centric solutions. It's a wonderful platform, and more important, uh, it's a very uh, much a sustainability platform. So with that, um, I come to, to my closing, and I really want to thank you for your attention. Uh, I hope that uh, today uh, you um, had an understanding of how we see the world how we see the mobility ecosystem uh, moving ahead, how Bridgestone is contributing to that uh, uh, ecosystem with its platform, but with its core product that we will continue to invest in, of course, with our tire-centric solutions and our tire modules, and with our overall fleet management solutions approach uh, coming together as a system to create value for society and for customers. Thank you so much for your attention. Uh, it's been great sharing this content with you. I look forward to seeing you soon and also next year at CES.